Hello, Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. Um, I'm really excited to be um, doing this again today. Um, the Lord's been doing some incredible stuff just this weekend, been overwhelmed by the goodness of God, the faithfulness of God. Uh, my home church in Sayreville, New Jersey, uh, Faith Fellowship Ministries World Outreach Center, I was ministering at um, a group called Overcomers, people who are overcoming addiction and things like that. Um, I was ministering there, and I ministered also in Maryland at the Upper Room House of Prayer. I want to share some testimonies from this weekend, but let me just give a few seconds for people to sign on. I got to change the privacy settings really fast um, so you so you guys can share this broadcast. All right. Oh, it's public. All right. It's public now, so we're good to go. Um Again, Michael Lombardo here from Life Poured Out International. I am so happy to be on here, especially to have my guest and even the future guests to come, um, just anointed men and women of God. So it's going to be it's going to be great. There's just been a momentum here. A lot of people are watching. A lot of people are being blessed by it. We got a first time listener, uh, Karen. Thank you so much for joining. So we're just going to wait for some people to get on here, but please feel free to comment. Ask any questions that you'd like. Um, I would love to answer questions for you. My guests would love to answer questions for you. Um, feel free to like this post at the bottom in the comment section. Uh, right next to that is a share button. You just go ahead and share this post so more people can be encouraged, more people can be blessed by it. Um, it goes a long way. Just press that share button at the bottom at any time, and more people will be able to watch this um, online discussion. So Michael Lombardo from Life Poured Out. I am so happy to have Sam Juan on with me today. God is, oh, he's moving so powerfully all over the world. I am grateful to be a part of it. Little, little old me, I was a drug addict. I was broken. I was a God hater. I wanted nothing to do with the Lord for, you know, a portion of my life, a good portion of my life. And at 20 years old, I encountered the love of Jesus Christ, the presence of God. People would always tell me you could hear God's voice. You could feel God's presence. And I never experienced it for myself. So I just thought they were crazy. I thought they were Jesus freaks. But at 20 years old, I encountered the love of Jesus when I reached out to him at a desperate time and his love and his glory invaded my life. And I've never been the same since. You can't encounter Jesus and be the same. You always change. The moment you behold him, you reflect him. You begin to be transformed by him. Thank you so much, Christopher, for joining, Karen, for joining. Guys, feel free to comment at the bottom. I love to hear from you, whether it's something encouraging or whether it's just a question. I love to answer questions. I know Sam, also our guest, would love to answer any questions that you have. Um, in the comment section to the right, there's a share button. Please feel free to share this. Tell us where you're coming from, what state you know, you're coming from, what country you're coming from. People have been tuning in from the Philippines and from Africa and from um, all these different countries. So it's really cool to hear where you're coming from. Uh, so go ahead and share that with us. We'd like to go back and forth with you. We want to know who you are. So um, anyways, really excited. This past weekend, I've just been overwhelmed by the goodness of God. I shared at my home church at a group called Overcomers. And I didn't go there with a specific message. I just some things on my heart. The Holy Spirit dropped in I just wanted to share, you know, just authentically from the bottom of my heart. So thank you, Karen. You're from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. That's so cool. Um, I was sharing at Overcomers, and um, God just began to move powerfully. It's a group of people that are um, overcoming addiction. And um, so anyway, it was so it was so great. Just shared a message on the Word of God, how the Word of God sets us free. I shared a lot about my testimony and falling in love with Jesus. Actually, I got a strange word of knowledge. I got a picture about um, I saw someone standing in front of a refrigerator and I had no clue what that word of knowledge meant. I was like, why would I even share this right now? But then the Lord wound up um, you know, telling me that somebody was standing in front of their refrigerator not wanting to come to the meeting. You know, they had some attack on their life, you know, about not wanting to come to the meeting. And God was encouraging them saying like, listen, I'm so glad you showed up. I'm so glad you came. Two people showed up to me. After the meeting that had a similar encounter where they were standing in front of their refrigerator, they were planning on going and then all of a sudden an attack, just like a fatigue, you know, um, a desire to stay home 
came over them. They, they pressed on and they came to the meeting anyway, and God completely blessed them. Um, the Holy Spirit moved beautifully. You know, a, a man came up to me afterward and he said, I just felt like a chain break off of my heart. I just felt liberty and freedom come to me. So God's moving. He's setting his church free so we could rise and shine and live the life of Jesus. And then yesterday I was in Maryland. I traveled to Maryland um, to be with this, the, the upper room house of prayer. And um, they had some youth there that were being trained to be leaders in the house of prayer. So I did some training and equipping on words of knowledge and prophecy. And we wound up hitting the streets um, doing a treasure hunt. And we call it a treasure hunt where we ask the Lord for words of knowledge or treasures, people that he wants us to minister to as we go out on the streets. So we did that. And I brought some young people. I had two people with me that have never done this kind of outreach before. They were 15, 16 years old. It's so cool. These young people just on fire um, doing treasure hunts, wanting to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit and wanting to bless people's lives. So we went out together and these two kids were like kind of scared, you know, it was their first time doing anything like that before. So we had a list of words of knowledge. Me and the young girl I was with both had wheelchair that someone was going to be in a wheelchair so we wound up talking to some people um that were in wheelchairs prayed for them it was it was cool it was great you know we blessed them we had a conversation nothing real dynamic but we just shared the love of god you know and the love of god changes people so anyway it was towards the end of our outreach and the young guy looked at me 15 years old his name's grant and he said i want to do one more person And, you know, we stopped in this restaurant because I had to use the restroom and we were standing there and I said, man, so do you want to start a conversation with somebody? And he looked at me and he was like, "Mm, nah, I don't really want to do that. And so I looked around at the restaurant and I said, all right, man, I'll help you out. I'll start the conversation, but you are praying. You're praying for the people. So I looked around and there was a man there and there was his, his son and he was dressed in like a baseball cap and a baseball jersey like he just got back from a game. And so we walked up. Turns out the guy's a Christian. And I looked at him and I'm like, man, we just want to encourage you. We want to pray for you. I have some young people here that are just learning to step out. Do you mind if they uh, prayed for you and and your son? They're like, sure. So Grant, the young guy with me, wound up praying. And as he was praying, the Holy Spirit reminded me of a word of knowledge I wrote down before the meeting. Before the meeting, I saw a picture of someone hitting a ball, like in, in a baseball stadium. And the Lord told me baseball injury. So I'm looking, I realized, wow, yeah, that's right. I did write that on my list. And the young boy was wearing his baseball hat, his baseball uniform. And I looked up and I said, look, I told the, the dad and his son, look, an hour ago, I wrote this down as a word of knowledge um, that I was going to meet a baseball player and they were going to have a baseball injury. I asked the young boy, I said, do you have an injury? And he said, yeah, actually, my leg hurts really bad. I hurt it in baseball. So now these two kids with me are like, oh, my gosh, that was God. This is totally God. Everyone's just, you know, even the dad was like, wow, that's the Holy Spirit. So we prayed for the young boy, and he said his leg was feeling a whole lot better, which was great. God moved, and the dad wound up, like, taking a video of us. He's like, I want to show my wife. They're apparently outreach pastors at their church. So they were blessed by it. We were blessed by it. This is just simple ways that God moves. He's encouraging his body, um, even young people, children and youth and, and older people. He's encouraging us all that we have connection with him through the Holy Spirit because of what Jesus Christ did for us. We can hear the voice of God and we can take risks. We can step out and we could be a blessing to people around us that's what it's all about we have a connection with god not just to you know be satisfied and yet we we will be satisfied we will enjoy fellowship it's all about enjoying fellowship and being satisfied in his presence but from there we're to bring this fellowship to the world around us and god is training these young people i was so excited you know i did some more teaching after that and i prayed for all of them and it was an awesome time thank you guys for joining christopher powerful night at overcomers on friday he was there thank you christopher for joining um that's a harder name to pronounce nadia god bless you greetings from mexico so mexico is joining in here thank you sonia from wilmington delaware sonia thank you for joining um Wow. So I'm excited to have our guest on here. Before I get him on, um, I just want to encourage you guys who just joined on, share this. Let us know where you're coming from. Comment at the bottom. We want to answer your questions if you have any questions. Um, So feel free to comment. Feel free to share. Tell us where you're coming from. We love you. Thank you so much for joining in this broadcast. I know God's going to move. Our, Our topic today is persevering in your promise. I've been speaking with Samuel Wan from Pursuit 
New York City. We had a phone conversation a few weeks ago, and then we met up in New Jersey. He was traveling down to do some meetings in South Jersey, so we got together, him and his friend, and we had a beautiful time in a fast food joint. We had a beautiful time. You know, we prayed for one another, prophesied over one another. Um, there was just an immediate connection, you know, same heart, kindred spirit. Um, I love what he's doing in New York City. They're having monthly meetings. They're doing prayer meetings also on Sunday. They're contending for revival. Um, it's Pursuit NYC. He's a founder and president. He also does some itinerant ministry. God's really releasing him to do a lot more itinerant ministry. So he's traveling and things are opening up for him. He's just a man of God. He has a passion for the presence of God, a passion to disciple people. He's discipling people. Like I met one of his disciples and he just shines Jesus, you know, just great fruit, beautiful fruit. Um, thank you, Sharday. Thank you, Philip, for joining. Uh, people from Florida, <laughs> Sharde said, you and Selena Rock. Thank you for that. James and Rudolph. Um, <laughs> James been praying for me on the, to be on the bestseller list. God's doing cool stuff with that. My book's being released in January, re-released with Destiny Image Publishers. It's going to be called Immersed in His Glory. Actually, we're doing a big conference in January called Immersed. It's going to be for a book release, but it's also going to be for people to encounter the presence of God, the glory of God, to receive impartation, prophetic ministry. Um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of announcing about that in the near future. So anyway, Stephanie, my mom joined on also. All kinds of people are joining on. So I'm going to introduce Sam Juan. Um, I'm going to get him on the broadcast now. There you are on screen. How you doing, man? Hey, what's, hey, what's up, up, man? Hello, everyone <laughs> watching. Yeah, bro, I'm really happy that you took time out of your uh, busy schedule, man, just uh, just to sit with me and talk. Can you hear me? No, I'm with really, me. It's a blessing. Yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? I don't yeah, know you just stuff, stuff work, but yeah, no, you just broke up a little bit, but it looks pretty good right now. Um. All right, I think we're good, man. So, what'd you say? I said, I said it was, it was. It's a blessing to have you on here. I think I didn't think we we caught what you said. No, I was saying it was a blessing for me, likewise. Ah, oh, cool, man. I know you just had a prayer meeting up there, and you kind of just jumped in to uh, to do this with me. But um, we just had some good conversations, bro. I've heard a lot about uh, Pursuit NYC. Um, I looked you guys up online. Um, we have some mutual friends um, that really speak highly of you. And then me and you had a had a really awesome meeting at Five Guys. Yeah. <laughs> With yeah. one of your spiritual. The Lord came that day. So. Yeah. Yeah. He absolutely did. He absolutely did, man. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I know some people are going to be watching this that, um, you know, they know me, but they're not familiar with you. I want people to get to know you a little bit. For sure. Um, I would say I grew up in the church my whole life. I was forced to go to church for most of it. Uh, and then I encountered the presence of God. Uh, I experienced his love. I got to know him for myself. Mm. And from there, I just felt a calling into ministry. And mm -hmm. I was just exposed to revival culture, the mm -hmm. power of the Holy Spirit when I was a teenager. Mm. And my life has never been the same. I just wanted to live for, for God and God alone and just see revival mm -hmm. take place in this region, in our generation. So uh, just been trying to be faithful and just saying yes every step I can. It's really cool, man, how you encountered the Holy Spirit at such a young age, man. I feel like people, they get saved and, you know, they don't get plugged into a good community that really, you know, believes in the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, the kingdom of God, living the kingdom of God. Um, I, I'm so encouraged just even this weekend spending time with some people, you know, some youth in the upper yeah. room house of prayer. They're young and they're getting words of knowledge and they're hitting the streets. Like that is encouraging to me. You know, I didn't get saved at 16. 15 years old. My wife did, and she encountered the Holy Spirit, you know, so, and she began living in the gifts of the Spirit, and that's such an encouragement, bro. Amen. I mean, I feel like I was just very blessed and fortunate to have uh, just so many spiritual mothers and fathers and mentors just, you know, just pour into my life, invest in me, you know, kick my butt when they needed to, um, <laughs> and they just really modeled what it looks like to follow Jesus and, and pass that along, so. Uh, I feel really blessed to have had people in my life. And I feel like that's key too. what you said. You had spiritual fathers and mothers in your life. You know, the people that you've allowed to correct you and steer you along on the journey. I feel like a lot of people don't have spiritual mothers and fathers or some people just are not open at all to correction right. or, 
or rebuke, you know, and it stunts the growth of so many people. For sure. Um, it's really the reason why I am who I am today. You know, like yeah. I wouldn't be who I am today if it wasn't for those people and just the lifestyle that they modeled for me. Um, and yeah, I just feel very, very blessed, very humbled. Yeah, you are blessed, man. You're a blessed man. If it, if it breaks up every Thank once in a you, while, <laughs> if it breaks up every once in a while, I'm just going to ask you to um, just repeat what you said, just because every once in a while it's been breaking up a little bit, but not that bad. Um, if there's sure. people who are viewing, um, if you can't hear us or if you're having a problem um, listen, hearing us or something like that, please let us know and we'll try to try to resolve the problem. Um, thank you, Charday. They make a world of a difference, spiritual mothers and fathers. That's right. I was blessed to have a Amen. spiritual mother in, um, and father, you know, and fathers when I was in, at Christ for the Nations. Um, her name is Sharon Hobbs, um, and she was the um, she was a teacher at Christ for the Nations. She was also a part. She's very. She's a prophetic intercessor. She she led me on my first couple missions trips. She took me under her wing, got involved in the House of Prayer, and she was there, man, to encourage me in my gifts, to give me opportunities to minister. She saw the gifts in me, but she also told me a thing or two, man, when I was off base or I was getting a little fleshly or you know in my in my <laughs> immature mind, you know, she was she was right there to correct me, but you know the Bible says that fools you know, spurn, you know, correction. Fools don't want correction. So, dude, I learned as a new believer to receive correction, you know, to receive encouragement and correction so I can grow in the things of God. Yeah, that's true. Um, I mean, there's even that passage where Jesus says, you don't, don't cast your pearls to swine. Mm. And I just really feel like rebuke and correction is our pearls, you know? Um, yeah. You know, to, to, to the, um, to the hungry, even what's bitter tastes sweet, but mm, those who are full love honey. And I just really feel like if you're hungry for the things of God, then even what's bitter will be sweet later on because you're willing to receive correction and rebuke. And it will never feel nice, but it'll always be for your better if you can receive it. <sighs> That's really good. That's so true, man. And I feel like that is a truth that needs to be restored or at least emphasized more in the body of Christ. For sure. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about Pursuit NYC, man, kind of how it started and also um, like what you guys do. What's your heart? Yeah, uh, our vision statement is revival or bust. Uh, mm. People usually ask me what, what that means. And, and the best analogy I can give is like a sports team. Um, if a sports team's goal is to win the championship, it's mm. championship or bust. They're not playing to get good statistics. They're not playing to have a good winning record. They're not playing to make the playoffs. They're playing to win the championship. Nothing else uh, yeah. would make it a success. So mm -hmm. that's kind of our heart. We want to see revival and nothing else. So um, the ministry was just birthed out of uh, just encounters with God and just even the prophetic words that were spoken over our region in, in the tri-state uh -huh. area of revival coming and uh -huh. just being exposed to that and just saying yes to it and, and just yeah. agreeing with God's heart for revival. Um, so it was birth, I think, when, when I first encountered God a long time ago, hearing the promises, seeing the, the, the move of God, and just wanting to see God do it today. Um, so it was birth out of just trials and, and perseverance. Um, but long story short, God just brought the green light. Um, I guess after 10 years of getting the calling into ministry, and um, we just said yes and just being faithful. So we're just doing whatever we can to see revival take place. Yeah. Uh, gathering people, creating, uh, connecting with other leaders like yourself, um, yeah. and just wanting to see revival take place because I believe when revival comes, it's what God is going to do in a region. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not one superstar or one ministry or one leader, but it's what God is going to do. So uh, I yeah. believe revival will be every church on every block filled to capacity because it's what God is doing. Uh, so yeah. we just want to be a part of that. Mm. Sade said the power of yes. Absolutely. If you guys are watching, I know people are going to be encouraged by this. So go ahead and share this, comment. We'd love to answer questions. But um, that's so good, bro. That's so good, man. Just being faithful. And, you know, people think that um, one of the best pieces of advice I got when I first got saved was, you know, God gives you a vision 
And then, you know, we expect it to be just like, you know, the, the fulfillment of it to be right around the corner. Mm. You know what I mean? We think, oh, you just make one right turn, one left turn, and then boom, you're at your destination. And for me, yeah. you know, as, a, as a young believer, you know, I encountered the presence of Jesus. You know, I was just on fire. I wanted to tell everyone about him. And then I had an encounter with God where I was just laying in my bed at night and I closed my eyes and I saw a vision. And in the vision, I was, I was sitting down. And, and there was one person sitting with me and then the one person left and two people came and sat down and then both those people left and three people sat down and then it vanished. And then I saw like a sea of faces, a huge crowd of people. And God said, son, I'll have you speak to few and then I'll have you speak to many. And for me, that was like my um, that was my leave everything and follow me, you know, um, calling. Just kind of like Peter. Where, you know, Jesus said, cast the net over here. And then all the fish jumped to the boat. And he says, you know, you're were, you were fishing, you know, fish. But now I'm going to have you fish men. Drop everything and follow me. And, you know, I wanted it to be like the next day. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Well, I think I heard <laughs> a sure. teaching by John Bevere, you know, and he was just talking about, you know, it's not going to be, you know, right around the corner. We just want everything instant, instant gratification. You know, we just want, you know, we want the fulfillment of all the promises to be right around the corner. But we need to, you know, allow God to to uh, process us, you know, uh, form character sure. in us, teach us things, lay a strong foundation. And like even even you said with you, there was prophetic calling on your life. But you said there was like a 10 year period of time um, before you before you stepped into it. Is, is that what you're saying? Yeah, I mean, I felt like I got called when I was a junior in high school. Um, but I, mean, I was doing ministry here and there, but I really, really feel like uh, what I'm doing now is, is what God has called me to do. This is, you know, the main call. Ten years to get to this place and uh, yeah. just questioning the calling. You know, did I make a mistake? You know, did I not pray enough? Like all these different thoughts go through your head. And, and you, and the call is just to God himself, you know, uh, like you mm -hmm. said, God just does a lot of stripping. He does a mm -hmm. lot of just refining in that process of, man, are you doing this to get a promise fulfilled or, or are you doing this to really follow me? And uh, mm -hmm. that's been the journey. Wow, man. God asked me some really hard questions too. Um, he likes to do that. He likes to get to the heart yeah. of things. <laughs> you can't yeah. fool him you know he doesn't like he doesn't like the fluff you know what i mean he he sees past mm -hmm. the you know the 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 outward appearance and he sees into the heart and he cares so much about us man that he wants to he wants to purify our hearts in such a way that it's just all about him i believe he wants it that way because then he can entrust us with so much yeah for yeah. sure i mean i think that's definitely what it's all about where god does want to bless you God does want to give you the desires of your heart. Um, but I, I, I do remember a quote that Bill Johnson said, a uh, pastor in Reading of Bethel, where he says mm -hmm. that every blessing of God has the potential to shape human history or become a golden calf. Um, mm -hmm. So I think that's what it is. He wants oh. to trust you to shape yeah. history, but he's not going to give you something that's only going to be your downfall fall, or be an idol. You know, like he wants to entrust you, but it's a process you know, of building yeah. trust. Yeah. Another thing Bill Johnson says is God prunes you. So his blessings won't kill you. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's true. Well, strong statements, strong statements, but so much truth. So amen. much. truth. Yeah. We just think like multitudes and all this stuff and we just got to do it and let's yeah. do it. And God says, yeah, 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 yeah. But I see your heart. I see what you can handle. I see where you're going to be a few years from now. And I want to prepare you. I want to, yeah. yeah, I'm the, I'm the potter, you're the clay and I'm going to form you. I'm going to mold you. There's going to be no bumps. It's, I'm going to make you a beautiful masterpiece so I could, I could, you know, put you on display, you know, and I could use you for great things. Amen. For sure. So, so with Pursuit NYC, like how did, how did it start? Like, um, how come these questions came to you? I think this is important because there's a lot of people watching this that are pioneering works. They're pioneering yeah. stuff, and sometimes you expect immediate results, but it doesn't always look that way, and a lot of discouragement happens. For sure. Um, I, I Pursuit started um, simply because I was asked to leave from a ministry position I was at before, to be honest. Um, mm. And not to go into too much details and stuff like that, but uh, I would just pretty much sum it up as being stabbed in the back, to be honest. 
just yeah. kind of made a scapegoat and just put in really unfair situations. Mm-hmm. And just in that place of like, man, why is this happening to me? Like, did mm-hmm. I make, did, did I make a mistake? Mm-hmm. Uh, just, just cause even the place I was at, I was there because of a prophetic word and just mm-hmm. even then all just kind of fall apart. Um, especially when it isn't your fault. And so you're dealing yeah. with all sorts of different things. And, and in that place, um, I mean, it's, it's kind of a, 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 a fun story where uh, I went to this conference that I was supposed to go to. And there mm-hmm. um, it was like an icebreaker event. And one of the leaders that came from, uh, from out of state came and he was sharing. And the icebreaker was share something you're really proud of. So he goes and shares about his son that he's really proud of because he started this young adult service, a worship mm-hmm. night thing. And, and now it became a growing church reaching a thousand people in the city. And yeah. later I found out I knew his son, like oh, I, I heard him speak before and yeah. I just had a thought. It didn't feel like a prophetic thing or anything like that, but it was just like, man, I think I could do something like that, like host a worship service. Later I met with one of my mentors who was the uh, pastor. Uh, I was serving at uh, the last few years uh, yeah. where it was birthed out of and he just gave me permission to dream, you know, helping me with all the brokenness and disappointment in the in the previous season. And he just yep. wanted me to dream and dream big. Awesome. Um, so from there, I go and um, I went to Resting Place, House of Prayer. Um, resting Place, House of Prayer, but, New Jersey. Yeah, so I, New so I was there just, yep, in Jersey. And, and I was just there just with the Lord, just, you know, going through this hurt, this disappointment, this unfair t- treatment. And I just Mm -hmm. randomly landed on Psalm 38, verse 9, I believe, where it says, all my longings I open before you. My sighing is not hidden from your sight. And I was like, man, this is me tonight. Like, I don't even know what to say or what to pray, but I'm God. I'm just trusting that you know my heart. And Mm -hmm. as I was just meditating on that, the night is wrapping up. One of the leaders uh, goes to the front. He grabs a mic and and he says, Sam, can you stand? I was sitting all the way in the back by myself. He says, uh, we feel like God is highlighting you. So can yeah. you stand? So I stood up and he said, the first thing he says is God wants you to know that he's seen the longings of your heart. And yeah. from there, they just start giving me a prophetic word that uh, this past season, disappointment, all of it, the brokenness, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the confusion, all of that, like God is behind, behind it all. He's in the transition mm-hmm. and just giving a word. And um, mm-hmm. when I went, met back with my pastor, uh, he just gave me permission to dream. So I went back to that thing of like, let's just see revival and everything that yeah. God had poured into my life for the yeah. past 10 years or so. It just came out in that moment because I felt yeah. like God gave me a green light, you know, uh-huh. everything that he had been depositing and sowing in and, and yeah. breaking and refining. He's like, now is the time. And, uh-huh. and the vision came out, the mission statement, the core values, all of it just came out after so being formed and shaped by God. So that's how it started. Kind of a yeah. long story, but yeah. So it started, you know, um, from a, a time, a time of hurt and a time of transition, you know, yeah. and you had people in your life, bro, that, that encouraged you and, and gave you permission to dream big. I said, you, you, you know, you don't got to stay here, dream big. You yeah. Know, that, that's huge, man. Have to have community or mentors or people in our lives that say, listen, you know, this is just going to make you stronger. You know, this doesn't need yeah. to kill you. This doesn't need to, you know, um, slow you down. Just get healed, dust yourself off, and move forward with the call of God. So many people don't yeah. have that. Yeah, I, I really feel um, just really honored and humbled by the people that God has placed in my life. And, uh, yeah. but yeah, I mean, I think it's just uh, the timing of the Lord thing. I mean, I feel like if you don't have one, uh, you could always ask, you know, yeah. like you could always ask yeah. people, ask God to send people. Um, I I mean, I think there's just something there that where you're hungry, you're, 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 you're teachable, you go after it. And, you know, people might say no, but a prize to how people respond to genuine humility like that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Dude, you know, I've never heard one story you know, of somebody who's like successful in ministry, really fruitful, being used by God. I've never heard one person say, you know what? I just started doing what God put on my heart and it's just been a cakewalk. It's just, it's just been so easy. 
Um, I never had any trials, never had any testing. It happened overnight. Uh, <laughs> I never heard anybody say that before. And if you read the Bible, you know, uh, Abraham, the promise of God, all the years that he waited, all the testing that took place in his life, Moses, you know, he was called and it was a, it was a, you know, a tremendous calling on his life to liberate the people of Israel. And then he was stuck with them, the grumbling, the complaining, yeah. the rebellion, all of that stuff, man. Like it wasn't an easy journey for him and it didn't, you know, it wasn't a glamorous job necessarily, but it was the call of God. It was a glorious job. It wasn't always glamorous. Sure. He just over and over and over again, people who went through process, people that received a promise and had to wait and had to wait and had to trust God and had to, you know, sure. <laughs> people hurt them and they had to get healed. They had to forgive. You know, I just think God loves the the process so much, you know, even giving us opportunities to forgive people who hurt us, you know, to demonstrate sure. the, new nature, the new nature that we have in Christ, to be able to demonstrate that through forgiveness and and whatever, you know, whatever other situation we go through, the devil trying to throw discouragement, the thoughts of hopelessness, like, oh, you're not, you're not yeah. really doing the right thing. Did you really hear from God? And um, all of that stuff. And I know there's people here in this broadcast, man, that really need encouragement in that. Um, I, I see it all the time and myself included, you know, myself included. When God tells you to step out on the water, you know, you're stepping in, in the realm of faith. It's like you literally can't yeah. see anything. You're just standing on the word of God. So you have to learn how to stand on the word and not um, not on your sight, just like the Bible says. But on yeah. the journey, you need people to encourage you. You need to stir yourself in the Lord, uh, strengthen yourself in the Lord. And um, what would you say to people right now, man, that are that are really struggling, but they're in the process of chasing, you know, what God's called them to? Yeah, I mean, I would say uh, as human beings, it's natural to only be pleased when you see the results, you know, like we're, we're only proud or, or happy if, if things are successful. But I think in those moments, we have to anchor ourselves in the pleasure of the Lord. Um, and we all know in Hebrews, um, it says that it's impossible to please God without faith. Yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't say it's impossible to please God without the fruit. It's impossible to please God uh, without being successful or, or the right results. Yeah. And I think in those moments, you just have to realize you willing to take a step of faith yeah. uh, or are you willing to, to persevere in faith? Like you just making that decision, you just yeah. taking that step, you just doing what happens regardless of the result uh, and just anchoring yourself, knowing that he's pleased with you, I think helps you weather it because then, then you, you're gracious to yourself when things don't go the way you plan. You yeah. know, and just root yourself that, man, I did this in faith and, and that pleased God. And mm -hmm. just leave the fruit and the results to him. I think that really helps. Um, yeah. and, and just understanding that God is with you. Uh, he's for you, you know, and just trusting that He his pleasure over you is enough. Um, yeah. and, and it's easier said than done, but yeah. 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 Absolutely. I want to encourage the viewers that are on here right now. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for watching. Um, give a shout out. Tell us where you're coming from. Comment. Ask any questions um, that you have. We'd love to answer them for you. There's a share button at the bottom right next to the comments. Press share so more people can be encouraged by this. Sharday asked the question. She said, how could you encourage those to find joy in the process? And I pretty much asked you that question at the same time she asked us. And, and, you, and you answered her as well. But I guess I yeah. think what I would say, like for me, um, to find joy in the process, I listen to a lot of stories. You know, I listen, you know, I read, I read the book, you know, um, God's Generals. It's been a huge encouragement to me. Yeah. Um, I've listened to stories from men of God, you know, like John Bevere and, and different people that, that, I, that I've looked up to, you know, in ministry. I really love um, hearing their stories, like Heidi Baker and kind of how she started and Bill Johnson and how he started. I read a lot of books and I hear their stories. And to know that we all start in a sure. small place. We all start in a small place. Do not despise a day of small beginnings. And, you know, um, you know, Heidi Baker didn't explode overnight. You know, they, she was persecuted, mm -hmm. thrown in prison. Nobody knew her name. You know, uh, she was poor. Yeah. She had like, nothing. Um, John Bevere didn't get one phone call. God told him. Um, God told him to travel and minister and Benny Hinn opened up all these different contacts in churches and Holy Spirit told John Bevere not to take any of the contacts and to completely trust him, completely trust the Lord. Like imagine that, that is a huge faith leap 
to not take some of the contacts that someone like Benny Hinn is trying to offer you and, and to just believe God, to open up doors for you, to travel and to minister. So people all over the world, like Peter, you know, Peter said, you know, the brethren and the saints all over the world are experiencing the same kind of suffering as you. You are not alone. Yeah. I'll say that to you, Chardé, you are not alone. And to anyone else in this broadcast, we're all there. You know, Facebook, Instagram, they, yeah. they only show like the good parts of your life or you're like at the pool or you're praying for the sick or something. But yeah. we all <laughs> are going through hard stuff, man. We all are plowing sure. the ground. We're all trusting God and it's not glamorous all the time. So just be encouraged by the, by stories being of, of other people. Um, keep, keep at it in the word, uh, stay plugged into his yeah. presence and intimacy. Know you're a daughter. It doesn't matter if you don't do one thing for the rest of your life, you're loved and adored by your father yeah. and he's happy with you. Amen. That's key. Don't yeah. find your identity I mean, in what you do. Go ahead, man. Yeah. I would also add um, when it comes to joy, I think there's, a fighting for joy and choosing joy. And I think uh, for joy specifically, the Bible says rejoice, uh, you know, not feel joy. You know, the command isn't to feel joy, but it's to rejoice. And there's just something where you, when you choose to rejoice, joy soon follows. Um, yeah. And I just feel like it's one of those acts of faith to when you choose to rejoice, um, you know, they just find a reason. Just remember, I think there's a discipline of remembering um, mm. that, that maybe we've lost today just remembering how God came through. And like you're saying, yeah. anchoring yourself to other people's stories and testimonies to just stir your own heart. But uh, rejoicing is an action, not a feeling. Uh, rejoicing mm. is a choice. Um, and it's a step of faith. too. Yeah. Oh, well, you're absolutely right about that. That's, that's really good, man. That's really good. Um, so, Hold on one minute. So true. We grow and change the most in hard times and we trust God. Stephanie, that's my mom. Yeah. She said that. My mom's actually writing a book right now. She's got tons of testimonies yeah. about um, trusting God, you know, for people's salvations, trusting God for um, protection and financial stuff. And um, Sade is saying, yep, I'm teachable and filled with joy. I just feel like we need to teach people how to discipline themselves to worship in all circumstances. Oh, man, that's really good. Thank you, Sharday, for sharing that. I think one of the best examples in Scripture is when Solomon, I mean, when David um, gets Bathsheba pregnant and he and he loses his baby. I don't know exactly where it is right now in the Scriptures, yeah. but he prays and he fasts. And he won't eat anything. He won't take a shower. He's just mourning, and he he's, he's believing for the child to be saved, and it says the, the child died. It said the first thing that David did, when his child died, when he didn't receive answer to prayer, when he, when he was praying, he was fasting, he was believing God for a breakthrough. And when it didn't come through, it says he got up, he washed his hands, he put oil on his face. And the first thing he did is he went to the house of the Lord to worship. Yeah. Wow. Bro, like that to me speaks volumes. Like that's what he did when his prayers weren't answers. That, that, that's what he did when he was just wow. devastated. He washed his hands washed his face and worshiped. Yeah, that's crazy. It's yeah, awesome. I mean, I think that's the thing about worship too. It's, um, I mean, I just thought about it even when it comes back to faith as well, where the Bible says that our faith is worth more than pure gold. Um, and I feel like, I mean, if you look in revelations and stuff, it says that the streets are paved with gold. So gold is in abundance in heaven. Yeah. But what you don't really have there is, is a need for faith in tough times. Yeah. You know, like you don't need faith for tough times. You don't need faith for uh, unanswered prayers in heaven. And I think that's why faith is so precious in heaven. Um, there's just a rarity to it. So when you worship God mm -hmm. in those moments, you're, you're, you're saying yes to God and giving him something for eternity because there are no hardships. There are no struggles. There is no pain. There are no tears. And, there's, and it's just that much precious to the Lord, I feel like, when we yeah. worship him in those moments. Yeah. Yeah. And in our worship and in our praise, we're taking our eyes off of all the temporal circumstances of life. Yeah. We're taking our eyes off of the stuff, off of the failure, off of our needs and our lack. We're taking our eyes off of all of that. And we're placing our eyes on the King of Kings, the Lord of yeah. Lords, on his promises, on his nature, on who he is. We're standing in the heavenly places. We're standing in his mm -hmm. presence and we receive all yeah. the encouragement that we need, all the joy that we need, all the peace that we need. 
you know, as we just make the choice. I think the hardest part is just making the choice, just making the choice to worship. Like that's the hardest part. Just just yielding yourself to say, I'm going to do it whether I feel like it or not. But once you do yeah. it, <laughs> once you just look to him and lift up your hands, just everything you need just comes flowing down and flowing in. And it's, it's, it's the grace empowerment. It's his presence, the grace of God, you know, to empower you to just yeah. keep going forward in joy. For sure. I mean, I like to say that when you worship God, when you don't feel like it, you're not being fake. You're having faith. You're having faith. That's good. Yeah. That's really good, man. I feel like the devil, he does not, you know, if he can't get you in blatant sin and like get you to turn back on God and just run to your old lifestyle, what he wants to do is he wants to cut off your fruitfulness. He wants to hinder you mm. from making full progress because he doesn't want you to make a dent in his kingdom of darkness. He doesn't want you to destroy any of his works. So if he can't get you to stray from the Lord, what he'll do is he'll just doubt, discouragement. He'll try to hinder your, yeah. your, your action. He'll try to get you to stop speaking the word of God boldly, to stop, you know, um, to slow down on what you're doing. You know what I mean? So he's so sly. He's so sneaky. He's such a deceiver. And I just feel like we need to recognize also that these thoughts that we're getting, man, like the, it, it, it's an attack. You know, a lot yeah, of the time sure. it, it's an attack and the devil is intimidated by you. He's threatened by your obedience and the fruit that's going to come forth from it. And we just need to like King David. Again, I bring up King David because I just love him. But it said that when everything yeah. was against him in the book of Samuel, when all the all the all his enemies were against him, it says – he strengthened himself in the Lord by reminding himself of who God is and, and, the, and the things that God did for him. Yeah. I mean, I think those are some of the things you got to just do, just anchoring yourself, you know, just in his goodness, his faithfulness, past times he's gotten you through, you know, like the righteous are never forsaken, you know. Yep. That's really good, man. This is stuff that, you know, I really – People need to hear this, man. People need to hear this. And I want sure. I want to I want to um, pray for people because I know um, that there's people struggling out there today. And and whether they're live right now um, or not, they're, you know, people are going to watch later. So um, I would like you to pray for them specifically. Um, Sade said the enemy is stealthy. Obedience is the spirit point of warfare in the spirit. This is awesome. Keep up the broadcast. We will every week. I'm doing yeah. at least one broadcast, sometimes two. Um, <laughs> it's just the Lord's on it. And yeah. um, I really want to see people, you know, like I have people on here that are going on missions trips that are making a difference in the world. So, um, so that you have an opportunity to give and be a blessing in the body of Christ, but also people you know, that I thank God the Lord's put in my life that I just carry a strong message and anointing to encourage people out there. But um, anyway, bro, I want you to pray because I yeah. just feel in my heart it's so important to do that. I'm going to put up your website too at the end of this. Um, but first, sure. yeah, let's, let's, just, let's just wait on that and let's yeah. just pray. Whatever yeah, you want to yeah. do, whatever's on your heart. Yeah. Um, God, I just want to thank you so much uh, for your faithfulness, God. Lord, your faithfulness on our lives leads to faith. So, Lord, whenever we feel like we're lack, lacking faith, low on faith, uh, Lord, your faithfulness more than makes up for it. Spring of life. So I just pray for my brothers and sisters right now who are discouraged, that you would guard their hearts, that you would help them guard their hearts. Lord, we just pray for any area of bitterness or uh, discouragement or unbelief to just be surrendered to you and to just come back into trust that you are faithful, that you are good that the best is yet to come, that you're a good father. So, Lord, I just pray that even in the process, even in the disappointment, that you would father our brothers and sisters who are listening to this now or, or who will eventually listen to them, uh, to this, that you will keep fathering them as a good father. So, Lord, yeah. we just pray for their hearts, that mm -hmm. um, whatever has come to just poison their hearts, to discourage mm -hmm. their hearts, to, to deflate yeah. their hearts, God, that you would bring it to life. Lord, we just pray for the restoration of hearts um, right now in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. Mm -hmm. We just pray for courage to arise, to dream, to dream again, and to dream bigger, God. Uh, so, Father, I just want to bless uh, all those who will listen to this, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just feel in my heart that there's um, some people that are watching or will watch that have hurts um, based on, like, offenses in church, people hurting you in church. Um, maybe you've strayed, maybe you, you stopped attending church 
or maybe um, you just have a thing in your heart for you know, towards a church or pastors or leaders in general, um, or maybe you're just holding on to bitterness because of something someone said to you. But um, I want to pray for you right now. And there's something about, you know, believing something and speaking it. You know, the Bible says that we're saved and we believe in our heart and we speak with our mouth. So it's, it's not enough to even just forgive in your heart. It's important to confess forgiveness with your mouth. There, there's a, there's a complete, there, there's a, there's a completeness in, in the confession of forgiveness. So yeah. even right now, wherever you are, you know, um, by faith, state the person's name, the church's name, um, and just say, you know, let's, for example, you know, Stephen, Stephen, I forgive you, Stephen, I forgive you. And, and just, you know, whether you need to break the lie right now, break the lie that, you know, uh, church people are fake or church people are hypocrites. Or, um, you know, um, I don't like attending church anymore, you know, for whatever reason, church people aren't real. Just I break that in Jesus name. Any any lie um, church people, you know, we're, we're all people. We're all people and not everybody is a hypocrite. Yeah. There's authentic people in the body of Christ who love Jesus. And there's a lot of them. There's millions of them. So in the name of Jesus, we just declare right now that um, we just forgive all the offenses, God. We release yeah. all of the offenses in our yes. hearts towards individuals, ministries, churches, leadership, individuals. We just say, Holy Spirit, just yeah. take all of the offenses and the bitterness, and we just receive your healing ministry, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Thank Come, you. Holy Spirit, and just minister life, wholeness, truth. We need you, and we have you, and we just thank you for uh, you are the great gardener, and our soul is the garden, Lord. I just thank you for yeah. pulling up all weeds. And for planting Amen. everything that pertains to life and godliness and, and kingdom living and truth. So we just thank you, Lord. We love you. And it just yeah. um, bless every single person who's watching right now. Um, that everyone that would need to hear this would, would jump on. And I just thank you, Father, um, just for an increased sense of purpose, of hope, of destiny in Jesus' name. And I thank you for favor Amen. on their lives. Open doors that no man can close. Closed doors that no man can open. Just an increased favor um, to move forward into your destiny in Jesus' name. Confidence in that. Confidence. Restored confidence in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Well, yeah, that was Samuel. Powerful. Yeah, amen, bro. I love when this Holy Spirit just starts moving, and that's what it's all about, man. We share the word, but then there's demonstration. You know, the Holy Spirit, he wants to move, and he wants to minister to people's hearts. And um, your your story's inspiring, man. I know you're you're on the journey, and you're, you're moving forward, and the Holy Spirit, he's just going to continue to grow you guys and, and build what you're doing by his grace. And, um, you know, for everyone who's watching right now, um, he travels. Sam, uh, he travels and he ministers. He's a huge blessing to the body of Christ. His website is right there, www.samuelwan.com. Is that right? Samuelwan.com. All of his information's on there about his ministry, you know, endorsements and and um, how to contact him to invite him to come and minister. So, yeah, please contact him. He's a man of God. He has my endorsement right now. He's a beautiful man of God. I know he Thank carries you, the anointing. Yeah, bro. You carry the anointing and, and wisdom from heaven, a passionate heart to stir the church. Um, so I just, I thank you for that, man. I thank you for who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, thank you, bro. Likewise, I just want to honor you and just what you're doing, bro. I'm really humbled to be a guest here. I feel unworthy, man. To be here. <laughs> the Lord has made you worthy. You are a beautiful um, Amen. Amen. I love what you're doing, man. We're together, Lincoln Arms, contending for, for sure. um, the move of God in our region, New York City, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, all over the map, all over the world, of course. Yeah. Uh, but, we're, but we're neighbors. And um, so I'm excited right. to partner with you some more and uh, and to see how God will use our relationship, brother. Yeah. So if you're listening, stay tuned for more joint stuff and collaborations. And yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm honored to run with you, brother. Yeah, same here. Likewise, man. Thank you for joining and sharing your wisdom and your life experience, being vulnerable and honest and, and all of that. And um, I appreciate it, bro. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Thank you, Sonia. Um, a much needed word. Absolutely. We all need to hear this. Um, on Thursday, 
um, around 1.30 um, Eastern Standard Time, 1.30 p.m., I'm going to have Byron Easterling on here. He lives in Santa Barbara, California. He's a traveling minister. He's a prophet. He is so humble, but he prophesies so accurately. And and, and one reality that, that he's been teaching so frequently is the practice of the presence of God. And this is like... Oh, it just sends so much joy to my heart because when I, when I encountered the presence of the Lord, I fell in love and I just wanted to know how to live in his glory 24-7. I wrote a book about it, Born for More. Um, I'll be releasing, um, immersed in his glory in January. Um, so um, with Destiny Image Publishers, but it is all about just living in the glory, living in the presence of God, staying in that place of union, that, that abiding place. We are the dwelling place of God. The Holy Spirit lives in us, and now we can hear his voice. We can feel his presence. We can release his kingdom, the very essence of heaven. So um, I'm so excited to have Byron Easterling on um, with us Thursday. Um, it's going to be awesome, 1.30 um, Eastern Standard Time, but it's going to be like 10.30 um, in, in you know California time. So um, stay tuned for that. Um, IPMC Conference in Salem, uh, New Jersey is started today. It's going to be going all week. Andrew Womack is going to be sharing. Our pastor, Rob Rufus, I'm going to be there. I'm going to have a book table Tuesday night at 7.15 in Sayreville, New Jersey. Faith Fellowship, come if you want to get a copy of Born For More or if you um, just want to meet me, I could pray for you. I could talk with you. Um, the conference is going to be incredible. It is life-changing. So just come. The, the night sessions are free. So Monday through Thursday at Faith Fellowship Ministries. Um, come out. Andrew Womack, Rob Rufus, our pastor, David Tidamola are going to be sharing and there's going to be ministry time. It's going to be life changing. So um, come out for that. Um, my wife and I were doing a lot of outreaches in Perth Amboy. Um, we just did an outreach and God, God moves. Just four of us. We went out. Um, sometimes we have 10, 12 people come out. Sometimes we have four. But we're um, trying to connect more with the ministries in the area to see transformation, to see revival take place. Is breaking out there and um we're doing a family day august 5th we're gonna be doing a block party with faith fellowship um there doing outreach and and things like that and um also just outreach on a regular basis so god's doing awesome stuff traveling a lot ministering in new jersey and ministering in pennsylvania at the end of this month in august also led a ministry in new jersey i'll be in california as well which is which is exciting the pasadena area and then um philippines in october i'm really excited about that also harvest chapel in pennsylvania the beginning of october um, September is going to have a whole lot of stuff going on. So thank you for following our ministry. Our heart is to reach the lost, one, ignite the church, two, three, serve the poor, be a blessing to those um, who are in need. So we're uh, Michael Lombardo from Life Poured Out International. I'll see you on Tuesday. I mean, not Tuesday. I'll see you on Thursday, Thursday. Um, with Byron Easterling talking about the practice of the presence of God. So love you guys. Thank you for joining. Share this at the bottom. Um, and let me put my website up here. Um, if you want to become a partner with our ministry um, in prayer or financially, you can go to our website, um, www.lifeportoutinternational.org. Um, our, our different events are on there that you can see so you can come. Um, also booking information, giving options. Um, you can get uh, my book, Born for More. You can find out more about our ministry. Just go to www.lifepouredoutintl.org. That's lifepouredoutintl.org. So bless you guys. Thank you so much for joining. Love you. See you Thursday.